a very important point about the ignore list, both that specified through the SVN ignore property and through the global ignore list, is that any command containing an explicit file name bypasses the ignore list. So for example, although ignore.o was previously identified as being an ignored file by the SVN status command, if we specify an add command and explicitly put the ignore.o path into that command, the subversion client will add it as normal. OK, we'll just use the SVN revert to undo that addition of the ignore.o file. This time we'll use the SVN add command with a wildcard. Specifically, we'll specify star. In other words, match all files and folders. As in the previous examples, when we looked at adding files and directories, we get a series of warnings about files that were already un under version control. What may be more surprising is the fact that, if you look about halfway down the output, ignore.o is shown as being added. So despite the fact that the status command reported that ignore.o matched an ignore pattern and would therefore be ignored, when we specify svn add with a wildcard character, it's still added. What's going on here? Well, the short answer is that by specifying the add command with a wildcard, the add command considers you to have explicitly asked all files to be added. As mentioned earlier, any file which is explicitly mentioned on the command line bypasses the global ignore list. Essentially, what happens when you give a command a wildcard such as this is that the wildcard is expanded to a list of all the files that match. So, in this case, the svn add star is in this case equivalent to svn add followed by a list of all the directories and files that match. If we were to manually type this list out, it would obviously come to a very long command line, and hence the usefulness of a wildcard. But by specifying the wildcard, you are in a sense explicitly asking the add command to add the ignore.o file. Consequently, the global ignore is bypassed. We'll just use the subversion revert command to undo all of those scheduled adds. As mentioned in previous sessions, the revert command is essentially an undo command. We'll look at it in more detail a little later. So far, we've seen that using svn add and explicitly specifying ignore.o on the command line causes the global ignore list to be bypassed. And specifying a wildcard on the command line doesn't help either, because this is seen as being implicitly expanded so that the ignore.o is specified to the add command and causes the ignore list to be bypassed. How then can we add elements of this directory and not have the global ignore list bypassed? Well, we know that the add command operates recursively when a directory is specified. So if we were to specify to add the directory, it would recursively add any contents to that directory. And because we haven't explicitly specified the contents of the directory, the ignore list will still be in effect. It's tempting, therefore, to try something like this svn add dot, where dot represents the current working directory. However, when we try to do an svn add dot, Subversion gives us a warning, informing us that the current working directory is already under version control, which is absolutely correct. This ignore list directory is in fact a working copy, and consequently is already under version control. We seem to have reached an impasse. We can't use the addition of the directory to cause it to recursively add all the files and folders within it without invoking the ignore list. We can't use a wildcard and we can't specify ignore.o on the command line because all of these things cause the ignore list to be bypassed. How then do we add all of the files that are not under version control but still have the global ignore list honoured? The solution is to use the force option with the add command. You'll notice that the add command previously generates a subversion warning. Many of the commands within subversion that generate warnings also provide the force option. The force option tells the command to ignore any warnings that are generated and to continue operating as normal. In this case, this is precisely what we want. We want the add command to ignore the fact that the current working directory is under version control and continue to behave as if it were not. In other words, to recurse down the file structure looking for any other files and folders within the current working directory that could be scheduled to be added. This now meets our requirements. 
the add command is no longer explicitly specifying the files to be added. They're actually derived implicitly from the fact we want to add the current working directory and its contents. We're not using any form of wildcard like star or question mark. So the problem of file name expansion causing add to treat this as an explicit file name and bypass the global ignore list is also avoided. So the force option seems to allow us to add the current working directory and still account for the global ignore list. And sure enough, when we execute the add command, that's what happens. We can see that all of the unversioned elements are added. More importantly, we can see that the ignore.o file is not added. So the global ignore list has obviously been effective when applying this add command, whereas it wasn't effective when we used a wildcard. Repeating the status command shows that all the files that were previously marked as unversioned are now marked as scheduled to be added. And repeating the status command with the no ignore option shows that the ignore.o file is still being ignored, as indeed is the ignoreherto.o file in this dir. And because our add command has added the addir directory, we can see that within that there is another ignore file, ignorehere.withdir.o. There are two more things that we can use this area to illustrate, so we'll use the revert command and undo all of those scheduled additions. Looking at the working copy illustration on the right, you'll notice that there is an addir directory within which there are two files. The first file, to be added with dir.txt, should be added, and the ignore here with dir.o, as we saw in the previous example, matches one of the global ignore patterns, specifically star.o, and this file will be ignored. Whereas previously we had to use the force option when we were adding the current working directory because it was already under version control, you can see here that the add dir directory is not under revision control. So we don't need to use force when we specify that it should be added. We simply put svn add add dir. And indeed we see that we've added the add dir and the file within it that ends .txt. Because the global ignore list is honoured, because we haven't wildcarded anything on our command line and we haven't specified the file itself, the ignore here with dir.o file is ignored. There's one final thing that we should look at while we're here. So let's use the revert command and undo those additions. And in this final example, we're going to use the no ignore option on the add command. The no ignore option to the add command works in the same way as it does on the status command. It tells the add command to disregard any ignore list. So in this case, when we request the addition of the add dir command, as we did previously, but this time specifying no ignore, you'll notice that not only is the add dir and the to be added with dir.txt file added, but the previously ignored ignore here with dir.o file is added also. And this confirms that the ignore list has in fact been disregarded.